welcome in the Airflow 2.0 series where you are going to discover the new awesome features of Airflow 2.0. My name is Marc Lomati, I'm the head of customer training at Astronomer and I'm super excited to show you this new feature as you will definitely use it in order to create your DAGs. As you know, in Airflow, we create so many DAGs and creating DAGs is really time consuming as we will repeat the same code over and over and over. Also, if you manipulate XCOMs, you know that you have to use XCOM underscore pull, XCOM underscore push, define the task IDs and so on, which is a lot of code. So the question is, wouldn't it be better to have a new way of creating DAGs faster that will make them clearer and abstracting the complexity of manipulating XCOMs as well as creating some tasks and so on. Well, in Airflow 2.0, there is a new concept that has been introduced, which is the Taskflow API. But before getting started, let me show you how it was in Airflow 1.10.x. Let's imagine that you have this very simple data pipeline with three tasks, extract, process, and store, all implemented using the Python operator. As you know, with the Python operator, you need to create a Python callable function corresponding to your task. Now, let's say that each task needs the output of the previous task in order to move forward. For example, process needs the output of extract and store needs the output of process. To do that, you will use XCOMs. For example, in the task extract, you will push an XCOM corresponding to the extracted data. Then in process, you will pull the XCOMs in order to get the extracted data. Then you will push an XCOM corresponding to the process data and pull them from the task store in order to get the processed data. As you can imagine, in order to do that, you will have to create a lot of code, creating Python callable functions, define dependencies, calling the push and pull XCOM methods, and so on. On top of that, when you use XCOMs, you actually create implicit dependencies between your tasks, which means you have to take a look into the Python callable functions in order to know if a given task pushed an XCOM and if another task pulled that XCOM. All right, now we have seen how time consuming it is to create a DAG with XCOMs in Airflow 1.10.x. Let's discover how it is with Airflow 2.0 and the Taskflow API. With the Taskflow API, you still have the same data pipeline with the tasks extract, process, and store. But the big difference is that you won't need to use the methods XCOM underscore pull and XCOM underscore push anymore. What you will do is what you can see below. Basically, to show that you share data between two tasks, you will use one task as a parameter of another. For example, here, the task extract push an XCOM corresponding to the extracted data. And as we want to pull that XCOM from the task process, we put the task extract as a parameter of the task process. And we do the same for the task store. The task store needs the data pushed by the task process. So we put the task process as a parameter of the task store so that we will automatically push and fetch the XCOM corresponding to the processed data. By using that new notation, it is more natural to define the dependencies between your tasks. And also you show explicitly that your tasks are sharing data between each other. Maybe it's not clear how faster it is to use the task for API in order to create your DAGs. So let me show you this new concept in practice. At this point, if you want to follow what I'm going to show you on your computer, you just need to click on the link in the description below and you will land on this beautiful page. From there, the first thing you need to do is to set up Airflow 2.0. To do that, we are going to use the Astronomer CLI as it is the fastest and easiest way to set up and run Airflow 2.0 locally. If you are on Linux on macOS, you just need to copy that command right there and execute it on your terminal. And if you are on Windows, you just need to follow that link. Once you have installed the Astronomer CLI, you need to create a new folder. So let's do this from your terminal, type mkdir airflow-2, then go into that folder and type astro dev init in order to initialize the development environment. Once it is created, open your code editor, then open the file docker file, and you need to change that line in order to use Airflow 2.0. To do this, go back to the page, then copy the following line right there and replace that one like that. Save the file and we are ready to get started. Now to show you the differences with the task API, we are going to create a new DAG in the folder DAGs. Let's open it and a new file 
called classic.py, then back to the instructions. Here, copy that code right there and paste it in the file, like that. So this file right there corresponds to the DAG, to the data pipeline that we have seen during the slides. Basically, we have three different tasks, extract underscore Bitcoin underscore price, process underscore data, and store underscore data, all implemented using the Python operator along with their corresponding Python callable function. Indeed, each time you use the Python operator, you need to create the corresponding Python callable function. For example, here process underscore data calls the Python callable function underscore process underscore data. And this is what you can see right there. Same for store underscore data calling the Python callable function underscore store underscore data corresponding to that function. And obviously we have the same with extract underscore Bitcoin underscore price. In addition, if you take a look into the different Python callable functions, you can see that we are manipulating XCOMs. As you can see here, we pull an XCOM that has been pushed by the task extract underscore Bitcoin underscore price, as shown right there, and we pull it using XCOM underscore pool with the task ID extract underscore Bitcoin underscore price. Finally, we push a new XCOM corresponding to the processed underscore data using the method XCOM underscore push with the key processed underscore data and the value to pull it from the task store underscore data using XCOM underscore pool. As you can see, we need to write a lot of code in order to manipulate the XCOMs and use the Python operator. On top of that, if you take a look at the dependencies right there, there is no way to know that those tasks are actually sharing data between each others. So how could we create a DAG without having to write all of this code in order to define the Python callable functions, as well as abstracting the complexity of using XCOMs, as you can see by the methods XCOM underscore pool and XCOM underscore push. Well, be ready because the Taskflow API revolutionized the way of creating your DAGs. Let me show you this right now. In the folder DAGs, let's create a new file called taskflow.py. Then back to the instructions, scroll down and copy the following code right there. Paste it and save the file. What you can see here is the exact same data pipeline as shown from the file classic.py. Let me put things in perspective. I believe you can clearly see the difference between the data pipeline implemented using the Taskflow API, as shown from the right, with the data pipeline implementing using the classic way, as shown from the left. The first thing you can notice here is that we are not explicitly instantiating a DAG object anymore. Instead, we use a new decorator, which is at DAG, and we create a function task flow corresponding to our DAG. That means you can parameterize your DAGs. Another very important point is that instead of explicitly instantiating a new Python operator each time you want to create a new task with a Python callable function, you use the new decorator at task and define the Python callable function right below it. By doing so, your tasks become much shorter and clearer as you can see from the right. Last but not least, you don't need to use the XCOM push and XCOM pull methods anymore. Indeed, each time you want to push an XCOM, you just need to use the return keyword as shown from extract underscore Bitcoin underscore price. And if you want to pull that XCOM from another task, you just need to put the task pushing the XCOM as a parameter of the task where you want to pull the XCOM. For example, here, extract underscore Bitcoin underscore price, push an XCOM. And as we want to use it from the task process underscore data, we put the task extract underscore Bitcoin underscore price as a parameter of process underscore data and same for store underscore data. By doing this, you can clearly see the dependencies between your tasks and also you know that data are shared between those tasks. All right, end of talking, let's run Airflow to show you that everything works as expected. So back to your terminal, here in Airflow-2, type astro d start in order to run Airflow. Once Airflow is running, go to your web browser, open a new tab and type localhost colon 8080. Then admin admin and you land on this beautiful page. As you can see here, we have the two DAGs, classic underscore DAG and taskflow. Let's begin with classic underscore DAG. Turn on the toggle right there in order to start scheduling your data pipeline. Click on classic underscore DAG, then grab view 
And as you can see, all the tasks have been successfully executed. If you take a look at store underscore data, then view log, you can see here the output of the task. And if you take a look at admin and xcoms, we have pushed some xcoms, one from extract underscore Bitcoin underscore price and another one from process underscore data. And actually what we print from the task store underscore data is exactly that xcom right there. Now back to the DAGs, turn off the toggle and let's verify if it works with the task flow DAG as well. From the XCOMs, let's remove them, actions, delete, OK, DAGs, turn on the toggle of the DAG, click on task flow, grab view, let's wait a little bit and it's done. Back to admin, XCOMs. As you can see, we have some new XCOMs and again, we should be able to print that value in the task store underscore data. So if you go back to DAGs and click on task flow, then grab view and store underscore data, view log. As you can see here, we have the XCOM printed on the output. Just to show you this, let's open a new tab. And here you have USD and change and we have the exact same value right there, okay? That's what you can see. All right, what we have discovered in this video? Well, we have seen that with the Task API, the DAG creation is much faster and easier than before. Indeed, you don't need to explicitly instantiate your Python operator anymore. You just need to use the new decorator at task with the Python callable function defined just below. The complexity of manipulating XCOMs is abstracted using the task flow API. And finally, the dependencies between your tasks are explicitly indicated using this more natural notation with your task as a parameter of another task. On top of that, think about the XCOM backends allowing you to store your XCOMs in an external system like AWS F3 and you just entered in a new world. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed what you have discovered. And as you can see, Airflow 2.0 is truly, truly powerful. See you for the next feature.